You go here. All right. Join X a dime. Except for my steeds. What's going on? Yeah, we finna bring you the round, round eight recap. I am. Uh, shit, you got any thoughts about the week overall, bro? Bro, there were a lot of uh, uh, speckies, hangers, uh, yeah, jumping off the back marks, whatever you want to call them. Um, it seemed like the refs. I just keep. I seem to criticize the refs more and more as I, I learn to follow the game. I know it's hard, but I feel like they missed a lot of calls this week too. Yeah, who, who are you talking about specific? Uh, not any team in specific, but I just noticed like a lot of high tackles are like they missed the high yeah, tackles okay. and they missed like a lot of like um I'm just not a fan of the fucking push in the back where you land on the ass. I'm not a fan of that call, bro. Uh the Speckies hangers, they were pretty impressive this round. Do you think <laughs> Brody deserve them? Nah bro. I think everybody uh, Except Collingwood fans would, would agree that Shea Bolton, he had the, the best market of the week, market around. What, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'll give it to Shea first. I'll give Joe Danaher the number two spot. Brody probably get number three. When you're taller, it doesn't look as good. It's kind of like NBA when you're dunking, like these smaller guys look better in the air. I, I wouldn't even say because of that because he definitely was on brought back. Yeah. And so mile check. Or, yeah. Oh, okay. But it it's like that. It didn't even mean anything. They were just in the middle of the field. It didn't even lead to a goal or anything. So yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It, do, it does lose weight when it's like that. So yeah, I don't think he deserved it either. But this Collingwood kind of got to win somehow. Whatever. <laughs> 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 All right, so getting into the games this round. First game we had Richmond and Jamal. You want to take it off, bro? Um. So <clears throat> going into this, I thought this would be a pretty good game. Um, turns out the final score wasn't that good. It was a blowout, and that was kind of surprising to me, considering Richmond just seems like they can the way they play. You put numbers to the contest. It seems like that can never fail, and that's the way that they play. But they just got beat this game. They played decent in the beginning, but second quarter, Geelong took off. Jeremy Cameron had a, a big second quarter. Uh, Geelong's pretty good at bringing the ball from the defensive 50 to the, to the 450. At one point, they had like four to five goals were, were from that spot all the way downfield. And, you know, you got to be able to move the ball decent to be able to do that, especially against a team in Richmond um, who are reigning premiers. Uh, so, yeah, I just think... Geelong's a real deal, my takeaways from this game, and they missed a lot of goals in the beginning, too. So, Geelong's just getting respect each week, for real, for real. Yeah, so th this was a premiership uh, rematch, if you will. And Geelong showed up for this. Like, they, they actually wanted this. Look, Geelong had a few good wins this season, all in the past three weeks. Except that they lost against Sydney. I don't know what happened there, but. They game against us, West Coast, he was out there, and they, <laughs> and they game against Richmond, bro, they was looking like a solid squad that deserved to be in the, premier, the premiership. Even though they had a slow start, I think at quarter time, <clears throat> it was like 27 to 9, Richmond up, but uh, come that second half, everything just started clicking for Geelong, Tom Hawkins, he was hitting, you know, his signature shot. Um, right outside the pocket. Is it is this still the pocket when it's outside the fifty? Uh, I, I, I just call it boundary. That's what they be saying. Yeah, yeah, right next to the boundary line, if you will. But uh, yeah, Tom Hawkins still doing his thing. So man, R Richmond really wasn't there. Other, other than um, Shay, he had that mark of the year. Could have been uh, in the first quarter, but. Richmond just didn't look like that second half just wasn't Richmond's half. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say about it. And it was at home, so it's like, ooh. You know. Yeah, it was definitely surprising. Like Richmond's just becoming a question mark. When they come to play, they play, but when they don't, when they give up, they give up, man. They almost got doubled. They did. No, they almost got doubled up on the score. They oh, did get they, doubled up. Exactly, doubled up. Oh my god. Yeah, man. Y'all boys done. <laughs> All right, next game we had Gold Coast Suns versus St. Kilda. 
this game was the king matchup, the the king twins playing facing off against each other, and I was disappointed in Max. Uh, Max, I think, only had one goal this whole game. Ben had three, so we know who the superior twin is now. Uh, but that didn't equate to the superior team. Saints won this. But it did get a little spicy, a little fire. <laughs> Bro, this Couple is one of goddamn. As far as a physical, like, teams getting at each other type of game, bro, this is one of my favorites so far, bro. Yeah, it was pretty interesting, bro. Somebody got, what, DD, not DDT, he got the phone to the damn ground. Lemons got that scoop, bro. <laughs> Drop. <laughs> and then they, they started, they kept going, bro. Zach Jones was big on, on kept, keep uh, starting to beef, bro. He kept, I don't know what it is about, bro, but I wonder if Nathan with the same smoke that he is. That shit was funny, bro. bro. Uh, but as far as the game goes, early on, both teams didn't look good at all. I felt like they both were looking sloppy, drop marks, bad defense. Um, I feel like the energy was low-key, like the only thing really keeping the thing interesting because they were trying hard, per se, but it didn't show with the class on the field, if, in my opinion. Um, I think there was just over kicks and everything. There was like kicking efficiency woes, just... It's just all ties together as far as just like not being able to have the ball moving the way they wanted to and getting to the 50. Uh, I did think, though, Gold Coast played pretty good. I think they played good for a, a decent amount of the game as far as um, their competition. Uh, because St. Kilda is supposed to be a, 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 what's called, not a premiership, but a final squad. And uh, we've seen them in the past, what type of pressure that they can put on teams. So I thought Gold Coast did a pretty good job uh, bringing them down. And I thought that this is a chance for them to steal a game that they could have used, but but St. Kilda kind of just put the pressure on them at the end of the game, and they kind of just stopped all that shit. Gold Coast was fumbling that shit at the end for real, for real, and I didn't, I didn't believe in them at all. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I, I was real into this game. The second half of it was real interesting because it was kind of a stalemate for like that a while in, a while. in the second half, and then Gold Coast got ahead kind of on some bullshit just. It, I don't want to say it's some bullshit, but it was like all some fouls and it was bullshit, bro, for real. But Saints pulled it out at the end of the game, really came down to the wire. So I, I, I'm proud of the Saints, bro. I think in the beginning when the Saints looked bad, I think Steele was a good stabilizer for them. He was able to, to keep them in line uh, while all the, everybody else was kind of looking goofy out there. Steele had... Like, I, well, maybe you seen that crossbody kick he had where it went? Bro, that shit was crazy. That shit was, I never seen nobody do anything like that. But, okay, going back to the King Twins, I actually like Max more. Ben did better. I think that's maybe... I, I think the midfield of Gold Coast played better this game, and I think Ben, uh, ben King benefited that from that, aside from Jack Steele. Uh, I just don't like the way Ben King goes up. He kind of go. He knows how to use his body, but he goes up skinny and soft, bro. Like Max King don't do all that shy away shit. So I think going forward, I want to see how how Ben King adjusts his body going forward when they both gain a little weight and they get older. It'll be very interesting to see how they mature. Yeah, I definitely see them both being stars in the game in the future for sure. Though. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next game, we got GWS versus Essendon. Go ahead, bro. Uh, this game was a very interesting game. I I went into this week expecting this game to be a very good game, and it turns out uh, for the fans it very well. It was very good, except for Essendon fans, because you know how it hurts to lose those tight games, man. And then you lost Jake Stringer; he got hurt in the middle of the game. I think that definitely had uh, an effect on on the end of the game. But uh, just to start the game, it was it, it was two I think quick goals from both sides, wasn't it? Then yeah. GWS and Essendon both scored. Um, Jeremy Finlayson, he played pr very good this game. I, I noticed him like immediately. He was one of the players who was getting all the goals for them. He had a dirty ass little elbow. I didn't really appreciate that at all. Um, but um, yeah, at times both of them didn't look well composed. They both were looking like um, bottom of the pack teams, but they did. They, the effort never really uh, wavered. I guess you can say. I liked one key moment I liked in the game was when they had the back and forth between Revan, the little the goals oh, and shit, um, yeah. the, the bolt and then the dog ears or some shit. I, I don't really know what they were doing, but I don't know them personally. But that was just key celebrations. It was like a back to back, like I, I, oh you did this, I'm about to show you what's up, then. And it was it was kind of felt like that the whole game. It was back and forth, and it was definitely a treat for footy fans, in my opinion. 
I, in my opinion, I think GWS had control most of this game. I feel like, so, I guess it was back and forth in a sense, but to me it was like GWS had got ahead, and it's like, I don't know if they got comfortable or what, but SNN would fight their way back. Yeah. They, they, they eased the pressure up, is what it was. Yeah, pretty much. It was like they would get comfortable with the lead and just, you know, chill for a little bit, and every time SNN would take advantage of that, uh, but... Tip and Woody didn't get involved for Essendon, Essendon until late in the game, but uh, they needed them earlier with Stringer being out, bro. They they definitely did, and Toby Green did his thing as usual. We about to need somebody in the back of the head, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> them boys was hurting folks out there that game. It, it, it was a nice game, man. Came down to the last minutes for real. It just hurts for my tips, bro. Consider, look, I'm, look at this fucking chair, bro. It's in colors, bro. I don't want to see. You want to see the chair, bro? Fuck you, bro. But yeah, uh, that's all I got about that game. Yeah, I enjoyed that game, bro. Yeah, it was cool. Next game, we got North versus Collinwood. Let me start this off right. I think North Melbourne has the two worst players in the AFL, bro. And I've continually said this, bro. Zerhar, he had two goals and two behinds, but that boy does some stupid ass shit every time I watch him. And guess who else? Luke Davies Uniac doing the dumb ass shit. You, you remember in the defensive 50 he did that stupid ass? Bro, them boys suck. But, um, okay, so about this game, you know, it was the Nobles going against each other. Uh, I think that was the headline. And also, fin uh, not Finlayson, Stevenson playing against his old team. Um, but Collingwood, they, look, they decided to move Darcy Moore at back, and look, it changed everything. They weren't struggling at the forward, and I think that made the difference. I don't know if that's because North's defense is trash. Ben McKay typically has some type of lapses, like every game that I watch. He's, he's, he, I see the potential, but he, he's definitely not there yet. Bro, he did some goofy shit this game. Oh, he definitely did, bro. I see the potential, but nah, bro. Like, you couldn't do, afford that. Like, Collingwood looked good. Like, if they play like this, they can win a couple more games. But North is trash. Like, the only thing North is good at, in my opinion, is, like, the corridor tra ball travel, ball movement. They, when they get it through the middle, they can move that shit. But other than that... Yeah, North, just be ready for your winning spoon. <laughs> that shit coming, bro. I'm done tipping y'all. <laughs> it is no hope. I, it just... Man, maybe next season, or but they were getting the ass with like from from the second quarter on. It was bro. embarrassing, bro. Yeah, it wasn't even no comeback. But Collinwood, I I did like what I saw from Collinwood. Um, I finally saw why people like Pendlebury so much, bro. I, I, he, he did that spin move. Yeah, it, it, and it and he wasn't fast or nothing, bro. He really he really just kind of slows down the game around him, bro. It's like, Both. and so I, I'm seeing. Him. The little Collinwood hype, but y'all still a bottom of the pack team. You don't get any respect for nah. winning the North. So didn't even be twenty. No, 20. Yeah, so I mean, good job with the win. Y'all showed me that y'all ain't the worst team in the league. Appreciate the tip. That's all I got to say. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's all that is. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, next game, we got Melbourne Demons versus the Sydney Swans. Uh, what, how you feel about this game, bro? Alright, so for me, bro, I, I came in thinking Melbourne was gonna whip Sydney ass. Sydney put up a good fight, but with Sydney, well, what Melbourne surprised me on this game is how they just shut down Buddy Franklin, bro. I really forgot he was playing. I think he had only had like six disposals this whole game. Um, Stephen May, the Melbourne defender, he was. He was locking Buddy down, bro. He couldn't. If the ball came his way, Stephen May had a fist in there, bro. Like it was nothing easy for Buddy at all. So respect for to Melbourne defense. And I think if you can lock down Buddy, Buddy looks like one of the just a dominant player. If you can lock down Buddy, I think you can lock down anybody. So Melbourne's just solidifying their spot at number one, in my opinion. Yeah. They, they just look like a real good team, bro. I don't know what to say about <clears throat> Melvin. They, my views on them has definitely made a whole 180 turn, bro, <laughs> in these eight weeks. 
I didn't know Melbourne was that good. Uh, this game, I didn't think they played the best by any means. It was a low-scoring defensive game. Uh, I think both teams had a decent amount of behinds to start the game, but later on, Melbourne st uh, started to find form. Uh, the one thing I like about Melbourne, okay, wait, wait. So the key of this game, I think, was skill versus effort. And I don't think Sydney has the skill to keep up with Melbourne, but they played as hard as the, they played real hard the whole game. And that's what kept them uh, contending. And obviously, that's kind of what uh, helped them. Cause, because if you really think about it, Melbourne's main forwards really didn't do much like that, from what I've seen. It was, this was a game where I, I recognized the Tom McDonald's. I recognized, like, Petrarca had a goal. There was uh, Ben Brown had, like, three goals. He might have had more than three, but it just shows that if, if one man can't step up, like if Bailey Fridge isn't stepping up, boom, you got Tom McDonald, you got all these other players. Um, and even when you're not playing the best. Um, uh, okay, so another thing, Melbourne, so they, what they do so good is on defense is like they have so many people back. Like they, they buy in as a team and they have like, so the forwards come back to play defense. The, the uh, but they have numbers in the defenders, so you really have to out effort them. And like, so if you have, if you're outnumbered inside the 50, Sydney, what they did was to get some goals, they would just out hustle you, even if they were outnumbered. And obviously, Melbourne wasn't putting the effort that Sydney was, and that's how they got away with some goals. But at the end of the day, Melbourne did what they needed to, and they still number one for a reason. Bro. Hope we can do that shit next week. <laughs> All right, next game. <laughs> Next game we got Port Adelaide versus Adelaide for what was it Showdown Forty Nine I believe. What you think, bro? Adelaide only finished with thirty eight points, but with that said, I thought Adelaide gave me vibes that they weren't getting smoked so bad. At least in the beginning, uh, Port wasn't playing their best, and it shows that Port's vulnerable at times. Oh, yeah. even with texting scoring any goals this week. So without the Abbey Bulls, it's not like to say that they were contending because they got whooped by like 40, 50 something. But it just shows, this is shows that Adelaide is not going anywhere without Tex. They're, they're not. Phil Thorpe had an okay game. But you got all them big bodies, you can't do shit about it. Like, it's kind of a shame. And and you're reverting back down to, to where you were supposed to be. You had a hot start this season, but you you show me each week that you don't have what it takes. Like, granted, you played a great team, but even against the suck teams, you, 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 you play down to your level, but you don't play up to your level. Uh, we won't have one of the best goal kickers. So, Port, they did good. You don't get any, you know, any love for this one, but they did what they had to do to win the game. Adelaide is just disappointing. Yeah, I, I'm actually disappointed, disappointed in both Adelaide teams. Where Port, I feel like y'all should have whooped. They asked a lot more. If y'all the top contender team, and this wasn't really a standout game for mm -hmm. anybody on y'all team. It's just, and I feel like it should have been. It's a showdown. It's a rivalry game. This is a game that you're you're at home. Both of y'all are at home. So this is the these are the fans that you want to impress and do the most for. And it's like I I didn't get that from this game. Mm -hmm. And. For the Crows, uh, I can see Tex really there to show up. I can see him uh, trying to get Bill Thorpe involved, trying to uh, get Bill Thorpe a bigger role in the team, and I can see him trying to coach him into that. But right, you got to play yourself too, right? You got to if y'all want to win, if y'all want to have a chance at making the finals with and from the beginning of y'all the season, y'all got a chance. Y'all gave yourself, you know, enough Good wins stuff. to get have that. Opportunity to make the finals. Y'all just gotta play all these games, bro. Y'all can't be doing this. Five goals ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> I think they just have an they, they went in with not having a game play. All they was doing was kicking it deep. I'm for the best, it seemed like. Well, it, it, they, they never really do have a game plan. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> it's just if they can't get it to Texas, it's just. <laughs> Texas! <laughs> they don't know what to do. Oh my god, it sounds like. Steph Curry right now this year. <laughs> but shit. Next game we got Hawthorne versus West Coast Eagles. Shit, I'm good, bro. <laughs> so, well, first quarter of this, Hawthorne played great defense because there was zero goals the whole first quarter of this um, game, bro. Arm wrestling. 
it, it was ominous of Hawthorne was all the way like this the whole time, bro. Because we was on the ass. You would. They, they, they weren't going down. For real, bro. They had like, it was like three goals we could have had, but just good defense on their part, bro. And I commend them for that. But that second quarter, whole different story, bro. Ten goals scored that quarter. <laughs> seven of them from West Coast. And... Bro, just throughout this whole game, my young niggas turned up, bro. Brandon Achi came out of nowhere, bro. It's like every game I find a new West Coast player that's turning up, and then they become consistent. Because you know who turned up last week? Jermaine Jones. You know who's here this week? Jermaine Jones. So, bro, we turning up, bro. Tim Kelly got in there with some goals. We really kept our, our veteran players out of it. Oscar Allen was on defense, and he played great defense. I'm not even com complaining about him on defense no more. He he does what he needs to do out there, uh, but uh, Darlin and Kennedy they they really kind of took it easy this game, uh, but yeah, I'm just proud. It was a good showing from like a lot of young players that bro, we we got a future, bro. We got a future. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I got a future. Okay, uh, a couple of things uh, to add on to that. Uh, Kennedy became top top twenty five goal picker this uh, with this uh, goal this game. So uh, congrats to him. Uh, y'all played good. I feel like y'all could have played better though, bro. Like y'all let up the gas a little bit towards the end, uh, just knowing how dominant y'all can be. Uh, it was. I know it's a good feel good feeling to have like non superstar players to really to look really uh buckle down and really get it done, you know what I'm saying? So, I definitely feel that. Um, Hawthorne made too many mistakes. Way too many mistakes. They just couldn't get composed under the pressure of West Coast. The transition defense got exploited a lot. Uh, it just seems like West Coast, when they're on the move, they're on the move and there was no stopping them. And then especially if you're, if you're left with numbers and you got those fours that they have, you're not going to win that, man. Uh, but yeah, they, they played good early with... They came with the effort... But realistically, we all kind of knew how this was going to last, um, especially with them missing uh, the midfielder with Omira, Omira. I don't know how to say his name, but he's real important to them. They got Wingard back, but one player isn't enough. Uh, we're not with Gaff playing the way he is. He's playing great. In the last couple games, he's been playing great. Uh, Pedro Chili. Pedro Chili, like, I wouldn't even think he could play like that, but just looking at him, but that boy is fire. He be making dope-ass plays. And Achi, and, and we're going to talk about it. I don't know if he's related to the other Achi, but both of them turned up this week. Both turned up this week, so uh, yeah, it's, it's overall it is a good win for West, West Coast. You know, you can win under the pressure of not having your best players do what they need to do. So. And shout out to our new rock coming up, uh, Bailey Williams. Yeah, <laughs> bro, bro's gonna be fire, especially you Nick. Nick now showing him a little hit out advantages he be doing, bro. Bailey gonna be fire. Yeah. Also, shout out to um, Oliver or Hawthorne. What's Oliver Haner Hanerhan? Hanrahan. Hanrahan, bro. He he was doing work, bro. Definitely gained some respect for Hanner, Hanrahan in mm -hmm. this game. And, yeah, Hawks, y'all just don't play a full game. Till then, y'all ain't beating West Coast. I look, you feel bad for CJ. He, yeah. He one of the best players already. Yeah, CJ definitely is. Bro, we shut CJ down that game. And that's another thing I really like what we did. Like, CJ, he tried to get in the game, but... Like, our whole game plan was showing CJ out, and then, you know, the rest of the Hawks really don't have much to contend with. Yeah. I don't think CJ knows how to, like, maneuver his positioning in his body yet. I think yeah, that's, with y'all experience, y'all know how to how to do that, push people under the ball and all types of shit right. like that. Even with the injuries, like, you got injuries too, so. Hawthorne, yeah, you got some work to do, man. I think West Coast actually is, has more injuries than Hawthorne at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. Key injuries, at least. Yeah. Uh, next game, next game, we got the Dogs versus Carlton. <laughs> this is what it feels like to be a Carlton fan, bro. Oh my God, bro. We, bro, we played so fucking good. For three quarters, we played good as fuck. And we folded, nigga. We was up 27 points and we lost that shit, bro, against the Dogs, bro. Bro, this shit was so funny. The whole time I was watching this game, I was like, damn, this nigga betted against Carlton in this game, bro. This nigga took against Carlton. I, so, I would take it that way. I would have been. 
I would have took that. I would have been, I was sitting there laughing the whole time, bro. Like, if Carlton wins, this shit is going to be fucking hilarious. Bro. Was it hilarious that we lost? Nah, because I, I slipped on each other win. Because y'all playing good as fuck. Bro, bro. we played. Yeah. Bro. Go ahead, bro. My nigga Eddie Betts, bro. Fountain of Youth, bro. Playing like in, in great form. That boy out here had hella goals, bro. Goal of the round. Goal of the round, bro. Out here year. with the. Bro, come on, man. That, well, Eddie giving it? energy. Off the boot. Man. Off the boot. Off the in mid air, bro. Then you got um, Owies, the rookie. Uh, bro, I love the energy that, that he's been coming with, bro. He reminds me of Jermaine Jones a little bit. Like, he's giving us what he's giving y'all. What, what he's giving y'all type of shit. Um, we played very good with effort, bro. But Wittering, I think he was the best on ground, bro. Like he played the whole game. He played good, but a whole thing with us is, bro, mental lapses. Like I think our issues are coachable, but we just don't know how to recognize a moment in the game and take that moment and be like, boom, we about to sit down, about to stop the run. Because our problem, bro, I think our biggest problem this year, I think we might be one of the worst teams. With uh, once we give up goals, oh, it's chunks, bro. It's at least three of them bitches. Every time, bro, and that's what, what and we we did a good job of stopping that shit uh, to some extent. Like Naughton was shut out for the whole game. Bruce was fucking us up. Bruce did fuck us up. I've been saying he's sorry. He the worst out of the three, but look, fuck Bruce, fuck him and Mustang. But uh, oh my god, where do I start, bro? I don't even know where to start. Bontepelli turned the fuck up at the end, bro. He was like, all right, guess what, bro? Patrick Cripps ain't talking about shit. I'm about to turn up, bro. This rivalry that they think is going on, I'm about to show him what's up. And he fucked us up, bro. And Naughton started turning up at the end. It was just too many mental lapses, bro. Like Weedering and Doherty and Plowman. It was just the whole back. But midfield gets the, the problems too. But we're looking. We played very good, but we finished the game like North. That's what we fucking did. So it it definitely seemed like y'all were ready for the dogs this game. Like any other team, I think y'all would have won this game. But like the way the way y'all. Contradicted, they midfield, they strength. It, it it didn't look like the dogs was in they top form really the whole game. What kept them in the game is they just stayed consistent. They just did the same thing all four quarters, and when y'all let up in that fourth, they just pushed on. They kept on doing what they've been doing, and right, I, I was. This is one of the most hype games. Carlton once again. Top three games of the round, in my opinion. But, bro, right, it really came down to that fourth quarter, and McKay was just grabbing shit over bro, niggas, bro. Shit. It was like, y'all niggas look good. It, it was just Crips, bro. Crips wasn't there in the back. But did you hear, bro? They were talking about he has a fractured back, bro. I seen him. They was just inject injecting this motherfucker. Like, I don't know how true that is. You see David T. David T was like, oh, nah, it's not fractured back. Like, David T sounds like he doesn't know what the fuck's going on with the club. Like, I, I watched an 11 minute interview. He we'll watch it after this. I'm going to show you. This nigga don't know what the fuck he's talking about, bro. He don't know shit about the medical training, the staff. What the fuck are you there for? You the head coach, senior coach. What's going on? Bro, that, if his back's fucked up, bro, rest that man, bro. Like, what are they doing, bro? Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, we're just, we're just not ready yet. We're. It's the epitome of last years. As far as I know, Carlton is 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 oh, we're we're, al we're almost there. We're there. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're one year away. If we play with this effort, this looked like okay. This looked like the effort that we came with Essendon. This looked like the first quarter Brisbane. It looks like we're getting better with effort at the very least. Now I'm pissed off that we lost, bro. We we shouldn't have lost that. That's not what final teams do. Fumbling a 27 point lead in the fourth quarter. That's not what they do. Uh, but. I'm starting to see what we're capable of. Uh, we play Melvin next week. It's going to be very interesting. If we give it to them too, I'm not, I don't even think we'll win, to be honest. But if we take it to them, Carlton's cool. Oh, wait, matter of fact, got to talk about Jack Silvani, bro. This this two weeks back to back, bro. Folks getting hurt off our own teammates. Yep. Uh, who got fucked up? Oh, Patty Dow got fucked up by Weedering or Pinnanet last week. Jake, uh, Jack Silvani got fucked up by somebody, bro. He took a shoulder. It might have been Cunningham. And now he's concussed and he's out. It looked bad for him, bro. Yeah. And now we're going to miss him for a couple of weeks. So it's like, bro, it's just... I don't know what's up with the goofiness about Carlton, bro. Like, Patrick Cripps this season, ball bouncing off his head. and Bro, just kicking off his fucking kneecap. Like, we got to work on the cleanliness, the class. That's one thing we need to work on. And if we do that, we'll be in there.
Eddie best to go. I fuck with my boy Eddie. <laughs> fuck her, Eddie. Alright. Last game of this round, we have Brisbane Lions versus Frio. Uh, you want to go first? You want me to go first? <laughs> I should have known something. Good job, Brisbane. <laughs> Frio ass. <laughs> Appreciate y'all keeping them in the lower half of the um, lower half of the ladder. Brisbane, y'all did great. Y'all played a good game. I, I, I can't I can't be mad, bro. Uh, I'm trying to think of specifics. Frio was really just getting the ass with the whole time. The one thing that stood out to me the most was Joe Danaher's mark this game. I think it could have been if Shea ain't have that mark. Then I think it should have been Joe's marking around, and I don't I don't know how Brody got it at all. But did you see that boy Joe tried to boot that bitch for like seventy yards, seventy meters, bro? He tried to shoot that shit from outside the fifty like a motherfucker, bro. He almost made that bitch too, but he, nah, it, it was too far from him. Uh, you just can say something about the game. Nah, you go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm just glad Frio lost, bro. Okay. Uh, as far as Brisbane goes, Charlie Cameron went the fuck off, bro. He's starting to find form definitely, and in, in he he was missing some shit definitely. He was missing some goals, but he could have had like six, seven goals this game, bro. He was just missing shit. Um, so he's making his presence known. He's starting to get involved. The cohesion between the fours is starting to work. I don't know if Hipwood had the best game, did he? I think he was kind of quiet. Not really. Um, but I think they would rather Hipwood be quiet and have Danner and and Charlie Cameron going the fuck off because that's the problems right there. Um. Hugh McCluggage is one player that I definitely keep on recognizing week by week. The way they talk about Pendlebury, uh, with his disposal class and his efficiency, I'm starting to think, okay, it kind of reminds me of uh, Hugh McCluggage. Is like, he plays the way that they talk about Pendlebury. Uh, so I like him. There's another player. Uh, Richardson? Is it dude Richardson? Midfield? He was playing real fucking good. Uh, <laughs> Rich, Daniel Rich, Daniel Rich. That motherfucker was playing good as fuck too. Like him and McCluggage, when they're both on, bro, their mid their midfield is already hurt, bro. I mean, Mill's not there, Rander's not there, right. so it's like, bro, I wonder what they really got. Like they got some people to sit in, the, in their pocket, like to secret weapons. Um, so they're definitely a dangerous team to find them form. I think they're on four wins in a row, if not five. This is four. 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 Yeah. So uh, all that shit talk, they're making me eat my words from early on in the season. Frio, Nat Fife just sucks at kicking goals, bro. That boy had ass. Like, he had so Bro, wasn't he right in front of the goal when he missed that bitch? Like, yeah, he, he actually did. broke it. He got a goal. He did. He had one goal this good. Right in front of that bitch, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. He's do Come on, you suck, bro. Um, Frederick got hurt this game. That's not good for them. I think Frio, Frio as far as them, they can hurt teams with speed. But I don't really see them having much. Okay, Tavener is a good mark option. Darcy, I think he played okay. He in the rough. He, he's a big body. Uh, but I think their their best asset is is their speed in the team and, and and five strength. But five, he's not playing that great this season to me. In my opinion, I'm seeing a lot of players play way better than him. Yeah, I don't, I want to put him in the top five. Minutes, nah, to be and yeah, cause I I, I like McCluggage over him. Um, uh, and here you go again. What ten goals, eleven behind? Is it? This is they still haven't cracked that yet, have they? Have they broke that? Or did I don't they think so. Sorry as fuck. Come on, Frio. What the fuck's it? every week? I, you play sorry teams by now, bro. We lost to Collingwood. You could have did it against us, but now we're playing better, bro. So his team's getting finding form. Frio, yeah. you ain't looking good, bro. Bro, that's all. That's all the games, but it, it is interesting. The teams that are trying to like starting to shape out the teams that we heard were good from. Before we start watching, I started to shape up to them good teams like Brisbane and Geelong. Those two are the first ones I speak, I think, of too. Yeah, man. Ass teams are becoming ass. Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, is there any other teams that's. Uh, North? They've yeah. been ass, but uh, I mean, after that game, they're looking more ass. Yeah. We, we kind of already knew North was going to get the wooden spoon this year. Yeah. GWS is moving up like they they don't have like the most most respect but they're definitely climbing bro and Essendon man, come on bro I don't know bro some teams still question marks like shit shit right now the eight is Melbourne Dawes Port Geelong Brisbane Sydney West Coast and Richmond bro 
I think out of the expected one, Sydney was the only one that wasn't supposed to be there. As far as we thought. Right? Yeah, Sydney wasn't supposed to be there. This ain't killed the woods. Yep. And that's still a possibility for that to switch out, in my opinion. No? I... I, I I do see Sydney drop it. I don't see Saints rising. No. I I think it's more likely mm. that GWS make the A. I can see. Yeah. Y'all yeah. making the A. Yeah. I, yeah, I can see Sydney dropping out in either you or GWS making the A. They gotta see Cribs, bro. They do it. I don't know why though. They gotta be fake, bro. There's no way. They gotta be considered like drug enhancements, bro. If you doing all that, come on, bro. It, that's blitz the lead shit. Man, that is definitely trying to be. And Crips, bro, if you are uh, yeah, young man, if you thinking about this Crips and you signing off on this, you that's like you need bro. to think about your future, bro. That's, that's what David bro. T said. Oh, if a man puts his hand up and he's ready to play, like, do you give a fuck about that man as a man, or do you give a fuck about him as a, as a footy player on your team? Like yeah. you're 26 years old, bro. This come, this is a back. I had a back issue before, bro. Not a fractured back, but right. bro, you have children that you want to see going forward. You feel me? Come on, bro. You you can't be doing that shit. Nobody else in the league doing it, but fucking us. Like what? <laughs> oh shit. I think that's about it for this one, bro. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Right. We definitely appreciate y'all. Always, man. All the love, comments. Likes, subscribes. Y'all know. Y'all already know, bro. Uh, everything, like monetary gifts, everything. We just. It's just still surreal that we're still in the position, man. It's, we're getting more comfortable, man. We're week eight. We still got a, couple, a decent amount of more weeks to bring you this season, man. And I'm just excited to do it. Uh, Unless we lose. Yeah, all, all our stuff is going to be in the description. All the links to all the stuff you can follow us, get it out of this, all that shit. All going to be in the below. Nope. But goddamn, till next time. Next time. I feel like I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs>